So living in the dorms, I lived in the residential college my first year at Michigan. I don't know if nervous is the right word, but didn't really know what to expect from college or dorm life or anything like that. I thought that maybe a smaller setting would be a benefit to me, like academically and socially, and I decided to come live here instead. <laughs> So my name is Miranda Schaefer. I'm the Vice President for Education at the Intercooperative Council Van Arbor. I go to the University of Michigan and I live in Luther Cooperative House. I went to like a kind of smallish high school. I liked it and I honestly, my personal identity wasn't that I felt like I was low income. I always felt like I had more than I needed growing up. My mom actually owns a small business in Battle Creek. She um, has a senior care home and so I grew up kind of I always say with like six grandmas <laughs> upstairs and I grew up like helping out and doing that kind of stuff. So my choice of living in an intentional community, specifically the ICC and Luther House, I think reflects my own passion for creating a more um, kind of egalitarian world. I mean, it's very like idealistic, but I mean, you gotta strive for something. So the way I see the ICC's vision is to be inclusive, affordable, and democratic, and that's kind of the principles that our standing rules are based off of. And I really like um, being a part of an organization that has those tough conversations about classism, about race relations, because even though it is social justice oriented, um, people from all different identities can live here. Things still happen and everyone is still coming in with their different biases and prejudices that you can't help but pick up walking through life, and so it's a good place to challenge those. Uh, before coming to the University of Michigan, I lived at home and was commuting to and from school. Uh, my house was foreclosed. I didn't really have anywhere else to go, honestly, so um, my parents were trying to decide like, when they were going to be renting a new place, if they could afford to get a room with me, and I told them like, they didn't have to worry about it. I'd figure out something once I got here. So. Um, my name is Austin Goff. I live at Luther House, which is just one of the many co student co-ops here in Ann Arbor. We're just a part of the Inner Cooperative Council of the ICC. Um, each house is run um, unitarily, like controlled all by themselves, and then they have a board rep that connects every house. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a leftist, honestly, so like this was like, as soon as I started reading about it, like I was like, this is, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. Like it was, I mean, if I were to describe and compare it to like a fraternity, like I usually say like it's kind of like a communist co-ed frat almost. Um, because we're student run, member run organization, like affordability is like first and foremost. We, so we attract like a lot of different people who couldn't afford to live in the student high rises or the big frat mansions here. Education is really important to us. Uh, the ICC offers a lot of different training seminars on things from like basic maintenance, to like passing kitchen inspections, as well as um, we have something called cooperative leadership training where we teach people about uh, bystander intervention, um, bias reduction, survivor support. Uh, my name is Setha Zachman. I'm a student at the University of Michigan, a senior, um, and I live at the Blackout Co-op. My mom's friend thought that co-ops might be good for me, um, specifically just because I had never lived on my own before. Um, and then also just because there are, you know, I mean, an LGBTQ minority that kind of, you know, searches out these kinds of houses to feel, you know, more welcome and have that space when they're on campus here. Growing up in rural northern Michigan, just specifically with the demographics of my town, uh, the size of it and just kind of the religious kind of domination in that area. Um, it made it very hard for me to be myself and I was very isolated. I mean, I became kind of like definitely angry and like kind of, you know, I took, I took on kind of like a rebel mode, um, which kind of became revolutionary for other students at the school who were also struggling and would maybe never ever come out, you know, unless they had someone to really look to and others to help them just because there's no representation there. I mean, I had my car like graffitied once with like, um, you know, discriminatory words. I mean, I felt ashamed, it was horrible, it sucked, you know. I felt very depressed and alone and just, I felt weird. Coming here, it's a totally different feeling, like I'm celebrated. Here at the co-op, it's amazing because it's just, it's so open to just like celebrating all aspects of life and diversity and it's pretty awesome. 
the, the housemates here really definitely do try and I mean they ask you and say like let's go do something and you know and just kind of involve me in things and I definitely slowly opened up. It took me some time definitely. I'm uh, just adjusting. It was such a big change. Sometimes it gets heated in our um, house meetings, yeah, and then sometimes out of house meetings, whatever, I don't know, maybe occasional yelling between housemates. Um, it gets like kind of sad, I mean, just because we all do live in such a tight area that you all kind of feel that energy. Um, I don't know if something happens, you know, that's, that's not cool. We have, yeah, we definitely talk about it and communicate and then hold people responsible. My community works to reduce consumption of waste uh, by composting, cycling. We have a sustainability steward as one of our officers who like picks out different uh, sustainable initiatives to run throughout the year. Uh, we try to plant trees. We have a gardening budget as well. We have been trying to plant our own food unsuccessfully thus far, but maybe it's not going to work. Uh, my community creates a, a very satisfying um, social life. We always like try to plan different events and like host local bands here, um, we um, have a lot of house bombing events, we have a little movie Monday, and uh, we got Wine Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, um, we got a whole bunch going on here. Anything from our flyers to the murals on our walls to ICC t-shirts are all drawn by members and from people who live in my house, which is really cool because I can look at a wall and see a little piece of history of the people who lived here 10 years before. That honestly it makes my everyday little moments better. Living in a student co-op, um, like that, that kind of culture will like introduce you to ideas that you probably never would have gotten if you lived anywhere else. Um, like going through house meetings, you're going to be forced to listen to people even if you don't agree with them. And you're going to have to like come to a consensus on like how your house should be run just something that's like, that's an experience you won't get somewhere else. I've definitely had to deal with like many stressful situations that would never have come up if I was not living in a cooperative living environment. Um, I've had to help people um, that were dealing with uh, mental health issues and breakdowns and even like substance abuse issues. Not only their health, but the health of like everybody else that was living here and like all the stress that they were going through by being, like having to engage in that situation. For me personally, the challenges of living in a co-housing community is everything a little bit. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's like a good kind of challenge. Even just like the chores, like cleaning the bathroom that other people are making gross can be kind of challenging. So you're like, I didn't make this mess, but I still have to clean it up. I'm cooking for 50 people. I have a partner. We have three hours to get a meal out there that's hopefully going to satisfy everyone. In that situation, a lot of the times, the person that was before us in the chore schedule for doing dishes didn't do their dishes. Our house is managed totally democratically. We have meetings every two weeks where we vote on everything. My community sustains itself economically by voting on a different budget. We vote on how much we're going to put in like each of us for food, for um, maintenance, for uh, cable, um, and as well as like a social fund for different like fun things like pumpkin carving or like red solo cups. Um, the ICC supports a lot of other intentional communities. We've given out loans to new um, cooperative startups in Detroit. Go, we host NASCO here every year. So people from different co-ops across the country come here and discuss like what's working, what's not working. Uh, yeah, judging by my experience here um, and what just the kind of the feeling that I know that I really thrive when I'm able to be in like communal spaces every single day and just actively living together and helping one another out. Um, I definitely would definitely consider living again um, in cooperative housing, co-housing further after college. I didn't know about the Fellowship for Intentional Community before, but after learning about it, I think it'll be a perfect resource for people who are looking for intentional community later. I, I would want to continue living in co-housing after I graduate because um, it gives me that really great sense of community. Um, a lot of my basic needs are met by living in co-housing communities like this, and that's something you really can't get living on your own. Mm -hmm.